Hi, I'm Seamless, and today I want to talk about some weirdness about the industry, about any creative industry, not even, actually, I guess it's probably true for other industries, but I really only have experience with sort of creative entertainment-based industries. Um, the title of this video is, I don't want to work for anybody, but the reality is, is that I probably couldn't if I tried. And what I mean by that, in the sense of when I when I was growing up, and when I was first like, entertaining the idea that I would I would be in some kind of audio based engineer professional, the first thought I had, like many I'm sure many people do, the first thought I had was that I would somehow be a prestigious employee, a, a part of some well known production house of some kind, maybe a movie studio, maybe a, a game development studio, maybe a label, that kind of thing. A lot of people, if they're not themselves, they don't want to be artists. Sometimes they don't want to be; they just want to be engineers. And they want to work in studios. They want to work with artists, and so they they think, okay, well, I want to work f like for a big recording studio, or I want to work for um, a collective of studios, or a, a label that has in-house studios and that kind of thing. You want to be the guy. You want to be working on a team of like in-house professionals. That's that's sort of like the first thing people think of doing because they honestly see that as being the end game the preferable sort of not just like the smart stable play but also kind of like this is how you know you made it when like you know i work for universal pictures or i work for uh abbey road studios or i work for marvel if you're like a if you're like a comic book artist or that kind of thing or i work for ea games or something or any of the developers under ea like maybe you work for infinity ward or treyarch or dice those kinds of things that's that's a pretty, that's sort of like the goal that people have. And for the longest time, such a thing, such an idea about like that desire, at least from my experience, was born of the fact that for when I was growing up into this idea, that was kind of the only way you could ever do things. Is that if you wanted to accomplish something on a larger, on a large, the largest scale there is, you had to be affiliated with any of these particular groups. And that for the most part, it's still true. Like you, you still, it's, that's like the easiest way of doing it. But it's actually no longer true that that's the only way. And not only that, but a weirder and more unfortunate truth emerges, which might have always been the case, but if it was ever the other way, they've done a really good job of making, of making it seem like it isn't. And that truth is that there aren't really people that work for those kinds of companies anymore. There might be some, but they're not, they weren't, chosen to be in that position because of their abilities. They're usually chosen because they knew somebody, they helped start the company, or they um, or some other, just, I, I don't even know what, because honestly, most people are contract-based. Most people are contractors. And if you're unfamiliar with the difference between someone who is an employee or someone who is a contractor, someone who is an employee is a member of the company, they're salaried, they're part of it. And then someone who is a contractor does not work for the company. They, merely, they mainly are doing work for the company, which is not really the same thing. I recently had somewhat of an experience that opened up my eyes to this. Um, I was approached by a company who does, actually I approached them first, because the, when I first heard of what they offered about what they wanted to do, it seemed like the great, it seemed like the job I wanted, because I actually forgot to mention this in my brief history of Seamless R video, but I actually did try to be involved in the video game development world during music. My my idea was I'll be I'll be like uh, Marty Marty McDonald Marty O'Donnell, the music guy for Halo and Bungie who left or was fired. There was some shit that went down, but he was like the Halo music guy and he was there from the beginning. He was the Halo dude who did sound effects and that kind of thing. I wanted to be that guy in some development team or whatever. Um, so what I what I did actually was I tried to cut my teeth on doing uh, music jobs for mods. Specifically around this time, this is when Crisis happened, and uh, Crytek was trying to push the CryEngine as being a uh, as being a um, uh, a proficient video game platform, and they made it available the free SDK for people for people to do modding. It um, this is around the time that the Unreal Engine three was gaining extraordinary popularity, so that was eventually good. that was inevitably flawed, but. There were plenty of fledging, fledgling game developers that were looking to do basically what I was doing, which is essentially trying to generate a resume so they could go work for larger companies because you cannot work for a video game developer without having credits to your name. You know, the whole, you have the experience, you need to get experience to have experience. So this is how you get experience. So that was sort of my plan. None of that worked. None of the projects I attached myself to it never produced anything worthwhile. 
or even anything close to worthwhile. I actually did a lot of stuff, but it was um, so that was a good that was a good experience in that particular regard. But it ultimately failed in terms of its of its goal, which was to you know have actual work done in the music industry, um, in the game, the video game industry. So you know, life moves on, whatever it happens. And so eventually, this other company I'm not gonna talk about because I I'm gonna say a whole bunch of stuff that paints them in kind of a bad light, but it's not their fault. They're actually a really fine company, and what they do is and it was actually extremely excellent that they came to me. They gave me their give me the opportunity. It's just that the particular specific way by which they went about things was just not what I wanted to do in order to get the result that they definitely offered. So this company is a sound design contractor, like a, a separate sound design developer. That's what they do. There are a collective of people that when a movie wants sound design for certain kinds of things, they go to this co- this company. This particular company specialized in the kind of sound design that I am really good at, that I spend literally my life learning and how to perfect doing. So it seemed like a match made, you know, in heaven. Now, they were doing music. They were in the middle of the... They, um, Initially, I couldn't do anything with them because they were based in the country I couldn't go to, and that was the end of that. But then later, um, they contacted me because they were looking for getting satellite uh, freelancers. Bling. I could have sworn I closed Facebook, but I was wrong. Um, this That's the first word that should have been a problem right there, freelancer. Because remember what, what this company is. This is a, this is a, this is a contracted this – this company's a whole job is to do sound design. They're not attached to a design studio or a, a producer or a production house of any kind, which means that they're essentially a freelance sound design company, and they want to hire freelancers for their freelance – let's talk about let's talk about the hierarchy here of what inevitably would have been how a sound that I, I made would have ended up – in a gigantic blockbuster movie. Literally the blockbuster movies. Some are really important this year. Big ass movies. Franchises that would murder your soul with how large they are. And like venerable and old and, and great. And a cre- incredible resume padding if that would have ever turned out correctly. But let's talk about the, the process here. I would have made... I make sounds. So they give me these... The, the middleman here. The... Um, uh, that <laughs> just one of the middlemen actually because of the way that the process will continue not to many 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 more middlemen but the the first set of people this company gives me a list of specs about the kinds of sounds they want to make i had no context i just have them their list of stuff i don't have any kind of movies movie sketches or anything in fact i don't i never officially was told what movies i i they did tell me but it wasn't like the specs themselves don't tell me what the movie is for but they, they do tell me what the kind of sounds they want to have they give me some references and they give me some sort of just idea about where to go and then i make a whole shit ton of sounds i just make all the sounds i make a sh- endless amount of sounds i give all of those sounds to the freelancer dudes and that's actually where they pay me they, i get paid for that that's what i get paid for right there and then my interaction with the production process ends this is this is because they now it goes to this gigantic library of sounds that they, as this production company, present to the movie studios, and then the movie studios peruse through this gigantic library of sounds, and then they pick and choose which ones they want. They put in the movie, and cha- by chance they choose one of my sounds. It's gonna go somewhere and get used in ways that I had absolutely no control over. Which like why? I mean, that's not something I wanted to have like every control over. There, but I just don't even know. I personally have would never have had any interaction with anybody from the the film, you know, people who are doing it. And in fact, the kind of people who are selecting these sounds, like this is the guy who works for like the sub sound lead guy, and the sub sound lead guy goes to the main lead guy, he goes to the overall sound producer, and like these are all guys who are like delegated underlings and set up and go. Like so many industries, and, and this is an entire company, an entire very successfully, extremely well done company who ex- entirely exists for what is essentially an unbelievably small niche of of, of of sound design requirements for movies. And this means that there are so many other billions of companies that exist to fill the other ridiculous niches that have nothing to do with what I'm doing. But they all, the actual content creators like myself, my work would have actually been used in something, but I would have no interaction with any any of that whatsoever. I wouldn't have been in a room with the, with the movie. I wouldn't have been in any kind of contact with the director at all. I would have been so far removed from that. I wouldn't have, I wasn't even, I honestly was not ever going to be in contact with anybody who actually represented anything other than the list of specs that blindly told me what, what the kind of stuff they wanted to do. I'm not saying that's a bad process. I'm just saying that as far as my expectations about working for that kind of, those sorts of things were not in any way how reality worked. Now, 
I'm not saying that's how everything works because obviously, you know, there are there are uh, more specific examples of somebody working more directly with things. Like for example, um, the last Devil May Cry game had Noisia and a metal band I don't remember the name of do work for the game, and I feel like they definitely had a lot more like involvement present, you know, doing that kind of thing. But I also think it's because they were Noisia. They were big enough, and the, the game, the developers and designers were making a point about involving them. Not just because they're really awesome sound designers, and actually was a super, super great decision, but, like, they knew that they were going to get their money's worth by involving them at the highest levels, as opposed to browsing a gigantic library of, like, not even just me. There's, like, there were, like, 30 other people who were doing, who were doing, actually, probably, like, five or six people at the time, who were doing the exact same kind of sound design. It was only, like, a chance that they would have chosen one of my sounds. And... That predominantly is how things are done, and not just in the game, like the video movie. This is movies, but like also this is basically the case for for video games as well. In fact, um, one of the reasons why I'm in I'm signed with Fixed is because Fixed basically does this too, along with whatever it is that I'm doing. You know, my own music, my own sound design, set packs of whatever. They also get put into a library that gets pushed into another company that does exactly that. But like I knew that going in. That was kind of like I was. I understood that. Okay, cool. This wasn't really a. It's not a first party process. I'm not in any way involved with anyone who makes decisions about how these things end up getting the movies. It's just it's that they're gonna pay for it and they're licensing. That's how, that's how it's gonna end up going. And that's totally fine with me because I understood that. But when I went to go try and, and get you know employment with this other company, my understanding was that my my idea, which honestly my bad for having this idea, but it was my idea was that I was going to actually work with, you know. The, the creative process of creating these movies. And that was an unbelievably naive assumption because th that culture, if it ever existed, st had, does not exist like that anymore. It is very much an extremely mechanical, almost corporate, like, production. And, like, it's it boggles the mind that I would ever have thought otherwise. And this this is true for pretty much anything. If you ever, if you listen to, um, actually, it's something that's happening currently in the video game world is that... Um, Working for the gigantic prestigious video game development companies, working for the huge publishers making the AAA games, is actually stopped. St st hasn't it doesn't ha hold the same kind of meaning it once did. In fact, it holds the opposite meaning. People are starting to associate things like EA Games, for example, as being crap because they are ruining the games that they put out. Like the last Sim City was just atrocious, and like Maxis, the development company, was really a shell of its former self and a really present in name only. So that means that a developer who's being like, I want to, I want to be the like, because they have like, people ideas in their minds of like the way it was in the '90s, where like you know, twelve people in a room are, are responsible for making a game, and now it is much larger, much worse, and people people have worked for almost no money for long hours and and ends up making a subpar product that is not a creative endeavor anymore. It's just an industrial endeavor. And that's not something I ever want to be a part of. As far as how I use my skills to produce the content that I make, I do not want to work for anyone even remotely like that. And not only that, so just the working conditions and the way that things are balanced out is one whole argument that I have against that. The other argument is that much like the developers I just mentioned in the video game world, their response to that was to say, Fuck you to the gaming industry and just go off on their own and do their own thing. Largely through Kickstarter or Patreon or something like that. Some kind of crowdfunding idea to do their own whole idea. Like, um, Konami <laughs> recently had a huge shitstorm and, like, they they fired Hideo Kojima. They canceled Silent Hills. They removed Hideo Kojima's name from a whole bunch of stuff. It was super douche moves on everyone's part. They say that they want to focus on mobile gaming by itself and they, want to get, they don't want to do any more games. And, like... So all like their 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 talent is like annoyed, and so the guy who in, like I'm not actually you know full on the, the timeline for this kind of thing. So I never actually played the games, but the guy behind Castlevania, since he can't make a Castlevania game anymore, he went and he's now he's making his own game on Kickstarter that's not Castlevania in name, but it's definitely Castlevania. And then there's this whole ukulele thing, which was they somebody couldn't make a Banjo Kazooie game because the the developers the, the publishers didn't wanna. So then now they're making they're making not Banjo Kazooie, but it's Banjo Kazooie. And like so many like so many independent efforts. Like recently, um my essentially favorite game of all time, Descent, that franchise, um, got uh the IP was actually bought from Interplay, uh, by the guys who were responsible for some of the older, older school nineties like space sim games. 
and their crowdfunding and effort to recreate Descent. And actually, that what is actually Descent in, in name. So that's kind of cool. I'm a little bit afraid about what they're going to do with it, but that's it's cool that they have the ability to do that. And all of these things are eschewing the idea that the established industry is the end-all goal for things. These are people who are saying, screw the industry, I'm doing it by myself. They have name recognition and they have a fan base. They can do that kind of thing. But that illustrates the point that a couple, not even that long, not that long ago, maybe 10 years ago, social media and the internet would not have been mature enough to support that, even for the most famous of individuals. So this means that if your goal, like this actually loops all the way back around to advice that BT gave me when I was discussing the idea of signing exclusively to Fixed. And he said that you shouldn't sign, you shouldn't sign exclusive to anything unless they do something for you that you can't do for yourself. In the case of Fixed, that was a licensing thing and a couple other stuff as well, but it's, there, there were reasons for that. But that holds true for a lot of stuff. Like, when I was a smaller uh, channel, um, I would get a lot of I would get a lot of um, invites to other similarly sized channels. Being like they wanted to merge, they wanted to become, they wanted to form like a conglomerate and be a bigger thing. And like I saw this happening as well with the EDM Spotlight thing. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna disparage on Monster Cat and EDM Spotlight and all those people because what they do is pretty cool. But the immediate the immediacy with which people were were like eager to join in on that and eager to adopt a logo, even if they weren't themselves, you know, official members or whatever, like, you know, because of the different logo colors and like, it was insane how fast that got adopted. And that stems from people's idea that they, they can further their goals and their ambitions if they attach themselves to larger entities. And they feel that the, any kind of individuality they lose by doing that or any kind of deals they make with them by doing that are worth whatever the rewards they end up getting from that. And it's almost universally not the case. And so much so that I, I mentioned this a bit in another video about how the goal, actually I didn't mention this in the video. This was actually a Facebook post I made. The goal for me used to be like when I made a decision to do tutorials, the thought I had at the time was that I could not differentiate myself well enough with the kind of music that I made, no matter how good it was. This may or may not have been the correct line of thinking, but the idea was that I couldn't make it well enough with the pull that I had with the music that I was making that I should go to a market that I can have pull in, which is a tutorial thing, and that worked out pretty good. And then leveraging the the uh, people, the, the notoriety I could create with the, the, the uh, tutorials, I could then use that to push my music and that kind of thing. And that basically ends up being true. But even beyond that, the goal has always been for me to make myself big enough to catch the attention of somebody even bigger so that I could become a part of whatever they were because I had in my mind that it was impossible to get the kind of like, you know, star studded largeness um, on my own. And the close, the closer I get to that being reality, the more that I'm seeing that no being by myself is actually way better. And I do not want to work for anyone. And not only that, but I can actually get to where I want to be by myself. And really, I mean, cause honestly where I want to be is not that deep. Like I just, my goal in my whole life, no matter what has always been to have a sustainable career doing something music based so that I'm spending all my time doing music stuff. I can live on that. Even if I'm not a millionaire, I can at least make, you know, non poverty level, you know, income, which I have actually already succeeded in doing, which is entirely the result of you guys. So thanks for that. But, um, it's, I see that being a thing now that keeping things to myself, not frivolously joining to other people in order to just, just for the sake of getting bigger, if I stick to it by myself long enough, I will eventually by myself accomplish what I want and I won't have signed away anything important to anyone else for that matter. And this is actually something I think that is true for even everyone else, like not just someone in my position, but someone who wants to be in my position, somebody who wants to be, you know, uh, a relatively famous like producer, that kind of thing. Because if you just stick to it, labels are rapidly like the primary function of what labels used to be is rapidly becoming a thing of the past. Labels themselves, the blah, 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 labels themselves are changing to acclimate to this. And some people like Monster Cat are doing a really good job of actually having value in the changing music market. But the traditional method of having to have a label in order to do anything is actually sort of gone now because a lot of what you want to do, you can do yourself. And if you just keep doing it over time, you can 
grow it yourself. You don't have to attach yourself to anything because it will never really be worth it anymore. It used to be worth it when you literally could not do anything without a label, but that's obviously long gone, a world long gone. And not only that, but like the larger institutions don't have the same kind of like prestigious creative draw that they used to. They're just workhouses now. And they mostly contract out to be people. So you're, you yourself are not actually directly working for them. And, and like I said about the whole, like, the contract and sound design thing. And like I said, that's also not always the case. I know that certain movie movie um, franchises like Star Wars, for example, they do very much do everything in-house. And that's how they've always done it. And that's always how that works out. But I'm sure they still contract out the smaller people like myself to do little things here and there as opposed to doing everything else themselves. It's just that, like... I don't know. It's a weird, it's a weird thing. And especially as, as that kind of stuff has gotten bigger and more mainstream, I mean, movies have always been kind of mainstream, but you know what I mean? Video games, especially anything that gets more mainstream, more and more industries crop up to solve extremely small niche problems that would not have been profitable to address before because the thing was too small. But if it was such a large thing, then suddenly caring about the guy that's responsible for supplying like bullet sounds, like if that's all that they've ever done, that one person who's just that is what their job is now. That means that you could go and you, you're the guy that has the range and you shoot, you shoot guns and you record it. And like you don't interact, like you're not making the guns, like you just have the guns. And someone's like, I have these guns in my game, so I have the sounds. So like you didn't work for them, you just contracted the freelance, sold the stuff out, and made, made the transaction. And then now it's in a, now it's in that now it's in modern warfare. And like you know, the the biggest, most incredibly grossing game ever made. And you have content in there, but you didn't really work for them, did you? And to some people that might not matter. And I can I get that. But for someone like me, like my idea has always been more like what indie development is now. And in fact, if I were ever going to choose to doing um to do that kind of stuff, I would choose to work for indie games. I wouldn't want to work for most AAA companies. There are still some that are, I think are actually really cool and still do a lot of really good stuff, but they're anomalies. And for the most part, uh, have either like an incredible amount of clout or they've somehow managed to weasel their way into not being crushed by whatever publisher they're signed to. Uh, just that they're not the norm. <laughs> That's what the word anomaly means. <sighs> yeah. But, um, Basically, this is just me saying that, like, I'm never going to, like, assimilate, you know, with other things. It's almost always, and for a lot, a lot about what you're doing, you're going to find, if you, if you get even a little bit bigger than, like, you know, like, even if you have, like, something got, like, you know, uh, 1,200 subscribers or whatever, if that's how many subscribers you had, you probably got, like, invitations from people being like, join our community, or become a member of this or whatever, or join our MCN. Don't do it. Unless there's, like, an extremely, like, specific prescribed benefit that they give you. Instead of saying nebulous things like, we make things better, or we give you more, like, whatever. Unless hard numbers and data are involved, chances are everything they're saying to you is a lie. Because if they were not lying, they would probably have hard numbers. Instead of just relying on hyperbole. Like, that's... Mm, that's what's up. Anyway, this has been another random-ass thing to talk about. Um, some of you might know what company I was talking about when I was talking about the, the middleman company, the sound design company. And like, I, I just want to reiterate, I have nothing against them. They do really good jobs. They do really good work. What they're doing is really smart. And it's just not for me. And it's fine, honestly, because like, it's not so much that my dreams have been crushed. It's just that my dreams, it's just that the reality of them is less, less. It's just less than what I thought they were. So, but it just means I need to do more on my own and accomplish more things for myself. It's supposed to for, it's supposed to for others. And boy, will I ever, because I have some, I have just plans, so many plans, and so much so that, like, I might not be able to do by myself, but I'm not going to say by myself in terms of, like, I need to go sign up, for, I need to go join some giant conglomerate to make it work. I mean, things like I might hire people. I might be the giant conglomerate, <laughs> but um, that's sort of what, you know, those are decisions you have to make when you're becoming a thing. I just want to kind of point out overall, overall of this, that like you do not need to become part of something bigger for yourself to matter 
in or to succeed in whatever it is that you're doing. Like you might be sold the idea that you need to, or you might have grown up thinking that this the way it is, because that might have been true once upon a time, but that isn't the case anymore. Uh, a lot of a lot of the control that people like the radio and television and labels had on stuff, but basically just all the content the the content the content distribution that was broken a long time ago. And the new world order is mostly about just doing cool stuff. And just keep doing it until you eventually get the notoriety you deserve. One fan at a time. Anyway, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any questions about this, please let me know. And as usual, have a nice day.